Hey there, hi there, ho there, it's Wispipedia. Today, I want to talk a little bit about how the story has been progressing in Destiny 2 this year. From Clovis Bray all the way to the return of Marasov, there has been a lot going on in the Destiny universe. Something has changed a lot about Bungie's storytelling, and I really want to focus on why that has been in such a great place in this year of Destiny 2. We'll be going over some specific story beats, so there may be some spoilers ahead if you are not exactly up to date with all that has been happening in the universe. But let's get down to it. Here's why I've been loving the storytelling in Destiny 2 this year. First, story happens in the game, not lore. Back in the days of Destiny 1, and even the last few years of Destiny 2, there were a lot of events that just kind of transpired. However, many story beats lacked impact, especially when compared to the story as it has been progressing this year. There are a few reasons for this, a couple which we will get into later, but I think the biggest reason why is that the story moved a lot in the grimoire as opposed to actually being shown to us in-game. A large shift that started in Beyond Light were the sequences where the NPCs would actually talk to us in first person as opposed to giving one of their canned voice lines as we read a wall of text that explained what was really happening. I know paying voice actors is probably cost prohibitive, but this shift has been the first of many steps in a much better direction. I would so much rather hear from the Exo Stranger why we are hunting down Clovis Bray Labs to get more info, as opposed to just kind of reading it from the text. It's not that big of a deal to have to read extra information, but I really prefer the characters explaining their viewpoints and goals in-universe. It makes characters feel more alive and gives us solid, tangible reasons to do what they're asking us to do. It also convinces people to read the lore for extra information. In addition, the voice lines at the end of most seasonal activities have become some of my favorite lines to hear. Every season, the major players are speaking to each other over comms at the end of an activity. This actually helps to solidify story ideas, and even progresses some characters' viewpoints further. There was a point in Season of the Chosen where Crow and Saladin were speaking to each other, and Crow's ideology, being ready to accept other races as potential allies, was brought up. I mean, we all remember Boomer Saladin, right? It's actually really interesting now to go back and play some of the hunts in the Dreaming City from Season of the Hunt, as you can hear Osiris, who was actually Savathun all along, speak about understanding the Ascendant Realm in the Dreaming City itself. The seeds for this season were planted all the way back then. To me, this shows that Bungie has a very strong through line written in the plot. Oh, and speaking of through lines, this is actually a pretty decent transition into my next point. 2. Events lead into each other. In years prior, it felt like a lot of the events that took place in the Destiny universe sort of just happened, like it was a Monster of the Week show. A new enemy or threat would show up, and we would dispose of them. The only real exception to this is Oryx. Oryx showed up because we took out Crota. There's a solid through line from the Dark Below to the Taken King. I feel like that is part of the reason the story was so well received by the Destiny community. It made sense. It flowed from point A to point B, and the antagonist had a strong motivation to come challenge the Guardians. This year, we had Osiris, uh, um, I, I mean, I guess Savathun bring Crow to the last city who directly helped us to avoid war with Keitel. We even had Crow save Zavala. Furthermore, Savathun did help bring the Splicers to the last city and even had the Vex take out Lakshmi, but these events followed clearly from one point to another. There was a narrative progression that has been way more cohesive than anything we've seen before. The thing that feels the most out of place right now in the story is honestly content from Beyond Light. We haven't heard from Elsie or Varric since the DLC launched, aside from extra fragments. But to that end, we do still have a big question mark over what happened with Aramis. I would really like to see that all get a conclusion as well as what else is happening with Osiris, Saint-14, the Dreaming City, Mara, Petra, and the Techians. But I digress. The progression of the story has been extremely clear. It makes sense that the story has been moving the way that it has. The seeds for each of these events have been planted in seasons prior. Bungie has been foreshadowing a fair amount of the plot this year, and oh yeah, speaking of foreshadowing, I guess we kinda know what might happen in The Witch Queen with Savathun, but there are so many other question marks about what get us to that point. Even knowing that Savathun is going to have a hive that can use the light, there's still the question of whether or not that is only in her throne world, or if the hive really have access to the light. I guess we'll know about that in, um, six months' time? Hooray. I just know that I'm excited to see how Bungie leads us there, and I do know that many of the characters we love are going to be central to that story. Oh yeah, it's another banger transition, what's up? 3. The plot is character driven. I love when a story considers the characters as the most important part of the narrative. The characters move the plot, the plot shouldn't move the characters. A lot of people say this about movies and other media, but I really think that Bungie has been doing a better job of letting the characters have the reins of the story. 
There hasn't really been a character beat that has felt out of place or outside of a character's usual behavior, unless it's for good reason, like Osiris during the epilogue of Season of the Splicer. But the point is that the character's actions and decisions are what drive the plot forward. Zavala accepts Crow as a new light. Osava Thun protects Crow and ensures that we meet him. Spider makes a bargain to release Crow from his deal. All of the events take place because the characters decide that they should, and that makes for a stronger narrative overall. Think about Season of the Worthy and the Almighty crashing into the tower. Now, there was background information that that particular Scion wanted to get revenge on humanity for killing the sibling or something. I don't remember. It's been a while. But we didn't experience that really in-game. It was tucked away in the lore somewhere. We didn't experience that and didn't have the character motivation. The Almighty hurtling towards the tower just kind of felt empty. To me, it didn't really feel like there were very solid stakes established throughout that season, partially because the known characters weren't calling the shots to make anything really happen. That, to me, is what makes some of the major characters so interesting now. Keitel, Mithrax, even Savathun are so much more interesting as supporting characters or even possible future antagonists because they stick around for more than one DLC. I really hope that Savathun isn't just there for the Witch Queen and then kind of dips. I mean, this isn't also necessarily perfect, however, as we haven't even seen Zivu Arath face to face yet. She has been moving pieces behind the scenes, if Savathun is to be believed, at least, but has yet to really make an appearance in-game. Here's hoping that happens soon. But either way, I suppose we will see what is next for the plot soon. Also, quick note, that line that Saint delivers to Mithrax at the end of Splicer, You are my people, makes me so happy every time I hear that. Saint's character development was choice last season. Uh, anyway, I guess the question now is, what is next? I really hope that Bungie continues this thread. I hope that the events of the next DLC and subsequent seasons continue a strong, cohesive narrative. It's been wild to be a Destiny player who is actually surprised and excited about what is happening next in the story. I've been saying it all year, but it's relatively new that Destiny has such a strong story. The universe itself is incredibly intriguing, so I'm excited that the storytelling has taken such a focus this year. And I mean, they've been writing rich lore for years. The lore has been amazing, but if the story all happens in the lore, then no one's gonna want to read the lore just for the story. You read the lore now for, like, extra stuff. It's awesome. Personally, I really hope they give Aramis a really cool wrap-up. They deserve it, and it would be nice to have a reason to go back to Europa. I feel like I haven't touched the destination since Beyond Light dropped, which really is a shame. I also am really looking forward to what transpires between now and the Witch Queen. There are so many different directions they could take the story. There are so many different paths the numerous characters could take, and I'm looking forward to them exploring the dynamics between the characters this season and beyond. I'm intrigued. I'm on board. I am ready to experience more fantastic storytelling in this universe, and I'm getting even more hyped for the Witch Queen to drop. But, uh, we do have a ways to go before then, so here's hoping this season continues going strong as they explore the relationships between Crow, Mara, Savathun, Saint-14, Osiris, etc., I'm looking forward to seeing what they've got up their sleeves. Honestly, it's so nice to be able to praise the story of Destiny 2 right now. All of these elements that have been brought together have created a story that is much more impactful and cohesive than what we have experienced in the past. I'm really happy to log in and experience this story as it unfolds. Hey, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. My name is Wispopedia, you can call me Wisp. Leave in the comments your favorite story beats or character lines from this year. Also, let me just shout out the dojo. Dojo is a Destiny clan and Discord server full of seriously wonderful people. We're building a beautiful happy family there. There's a link in the description so feel free to check it out. Do the usual YouTube things, like and sub, and catch me on YouTube, streaming live, starting very soon. And I'll catch you next time.